Okay. I'm gonna admit him. Okay, admit him. Make sure you have sound. Yeah, I gotta do that. And make sure you have that recording icon ready. Recording is on. Okay, good. All right. And just give me the cue, Larry, when we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. All uh, right. Thank you, for everyone, for joining us for the Brooklyn Tea Party uh, Zoom meeting, April 19th, 2021. And uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, we have a special guest, uh, Fernando Mateo, who is a candidate for the Republican Party, who will be running in the June 22nd primary against Curtis Slewer for mayor. Uh, for the nomination for mayor for the Republican Party. So before we start uh, to get into our candidate, let us start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, and we have the flag right here. Let's start off our meeting like we do every meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's start it off. Okay, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. 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 And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, which stands one, nation, one nation, under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberties and justice and for all. Okay, thank you. Larry, if we could mute everyone except mm -hmm. for the board. And like I said, once again, everyone, for those who are just joining us, um, thank you once again. We are having a format where if you have any questions for the candidate, I'm going to start off with my set of questions, but if we have time, we have uh, a chat area and we would like for you to uh, type in your question. If we have time, we will definitely ask a couple of questions from that um, chat area, but we're going to have everyone's mic muted right now. Um, so we could have no interruptions when we're talking to our uh, guest for tonight. So let me see if I see uh, my icon. Uh, okay, Fernando, I see you. Hello, hello, sir. How are you? Good, Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you uh, traveling in a car? Yes, I am. I, right. my, my apologies, I'm in Staten no, Island. No problem. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and we appreciate your time. We know you're busy running around, running for mayor, trying to save our city from madness. So we uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having uh, me. Uh, before, uh, before we go into a set of questions, uh, just if you could uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Cool, Glenn. Yes. Well, I, uh, my name's Fernando Mateo. Um, I'm a uh, businessman here in New York City. I own numerous bit small businesses. Uh, the last 30 years of my life, uh, I've worked very hard to make our city a better place. But just to start from the beginning, at 14 years old, I dropped out of school and I went to uh, flooring school. I learned to trade. And uh, by the age of 17, I was married and I had a small carpet business in the Lower East Side. At 14 years old, I was adopted by a Jewish family who used to pick me up in the mornings and drop me off at night after work at my home. And they taught me the values of hard work. They taught me the values of uh, integrity. And they taught me what... Oh, Fernando, I'm sorry. Uh... What it was to be, uh, what it was to be in two neighborhoods and taught me the real world. And that's why I am who I am today. I owe it to them to the discipline that I, that they taught me and the uh, integrity that, that they taught me. 1989, I went to Rikers Island mm -hmm. and I started a school teaching, training and finding employment for first time nonviolent offenders. In 1993, I initiated a program called Toys for Guns and we were able to take thousands of illegal guns off the right people in New York City. And 1999, I initiated the New York State Federation of Taxi Drivers because back then they were getting killed 60 a year. Oh. And uh, we were able to stop the bloodshed. And in 2002, I did the same for the bodega owners across New York City. So for the past 30 years, all I did was work 
for the democratic communities that I lived in and that I worked in because the Democrats weren't able to do it. I've been a Republican since the age of 18 and I've been voting as a Republican for the last 30 years. I have supported many Republican candidates, uh, including President George W. Bush, uh, Governor George Pataki, and uh, Rudy Giuliani, just to name a few. I'm a true New Yorker. I know how to bring business back. I have my priorities, but I'll wait for you to ask the questions rather than me going ahead of myself. That's okay. So no, that, no. That's who I am. Well, thank you. I mean, it, it's an impressive uh, background you have from your journey from where you have begun to where you are today. And we that is the true American story, uh, how people uh, could grow from the beginnings of whatever struggles they might have had in their life, that the, everyone has an opportunity to better themselves or grow. And, and it's an impressive story. And we do thank you for your service for what you did with the Taxi Limousine Commission. I remember as a kid uh, always hearing uh, about uh, you on TV and just hearing whenever there was a horrible incident with the uh, shootings and murders like that of our uh, poor the immigrant, mostly all immigrant population were driving these cabs. And it, it was a, it's a tragedy that these poor people had to endure this type of horror. Uh, and for their families that still suffer to today of those losses. And we thank you for that. Uh, also being the spokesman for the uh, bodega owners, um, they, they seem to be a very easy target for the, the scum on our streets that are destroying uh, the quality of life of these communities. Um, Fernando, your video seems to be off right now. I don't know if you see that setting to get your video back on. Um, how can I get the video back on? Here? Larry, you're um, the technical guy here. You know how that works? Oh, um, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I got it. You got it? To do it. Uh, hold on. You cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. Oh. Um, uh, you disabled my video. Uh -oh. It was on before. You try it now. Sorry, Mr. Okay. Mattel. Okay. Now it's... Okay. Yeah, now you... Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry for those technical difficulties. Uh now, uh, Fernando, what is your reasonings for running for mayor of New York? I know you're a businessman and uh, been busy with doing well, that also. But if you if you ask me, if you ask me, what's my biggest asset? My response to you is being in the United States of America. It's a privilege to be here, and because it's a privilege to be here, and because my parents immigrated here in 1950 legally. Um, I believe that I am uh, worthy of becoming the next mayor of New York City. New York City's crime rate has gone through the roof. Public safety is non-existent. The respect that we have lost for our law and order for our police officers is unacceptable. People not feeling safe means we have a depressed city. So my first reason is public safety. We need a strong mayor with strong leadership that's going to back up our men and women in blue and are going to make sure that everyone that lives in New York City has the same rights. Mayor de Blasio has made New York a black and a white city, and that is wrong. We are a, we are a city of immigrants. We are a city for everyone. And I want to bring back, I want to bring that back and those values back to New York. I was thinking of moving to Florida before I decided to run for mayor. And the reason was is because I didn't see, I didn't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel until I was approached and asked to run for mayor. As a small businessman, I've employed thousands of people in New York City. I have, I, I'm a stockbroker, just so you know. Uh, I'm also a principal uh, and I'm a partner at Pensera Securities. So I have my Series 7, my 24, and my 63. I have restaurants that I own. I own transportation companies. I provide jobs for thousands of people in New York City every single day. I know how to bring back the economy. I know what businesses need. I also know what landlords need. I know what our developers need. 
And I know that I will welcome back the rich because they are part of the fabric of New York City. Right now we have a city that hates the rich, so they're leaving. We have a city that hates more business people and risk takers, and they're leaving. We need to turn that around and we need to let people know that they're welcome into New York and that New York City will once again be the financial capital of the world. I believe in creating jobs for 14 to 18 year olds so that we can turn lives around, so that we can change and make sure that our future, which is our youth, have an opportunity to see the other side of the, of the world as well. Okay. So, well, yeah. so I, I, I've lost the visibility. I don't think you could see me and I can't no. see you. Yep, I see just your name again popped up. Yes. On uh, Larry. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so, okay. I'm back. Can We're back. You see me now. Yep. Yes. yep. Okay. I can't see you, but I can see me. Okay. So, okay. so I believe that, you know, our youth are our future. So if I want to make sure that every child that's eight, 14 to 18 years old has a part-time job all year round in New York city. I will create those incentives to make sure that corporate America, that the city agencies, that the small businesses all consider within their businesses and within our offices to have teenagers so that they can start knowing and understanding what having responsibilities are all about. Yep. Not everyone is gonna to go to college. I would expand on vocational schools for plumbers, electricians. I would team up with the unions and make sure that they can sponsor these for the city. And I would just work hard to make sure that those are my three major points. Then of course, there's the homeless issues. Then yeah. of course, there's school selections for parents. Then of course, there are many other issues that we will address that we will address and make sure that we that we take care of. So I'll turn it back over to you yeah, so that, that I can answer questions that yeah, you may have. Um, yeah, there, there was a couple of questions you uh, I wanted to mention that you did touch upon in your statements. Uh, one of them was, um, well, I just wanted, for landlords, you brought about, about landlords. Uh, I'm a landlord, I have a three family house. That's all I have, I work. I work at Brooklyn College, a campus police sergeant there. And uh, so I work there and I get a letter in the mail from the buildings department. I get two of them in the last uh, week. Uh, surprise laws that they created uh, in 2016 called Local Law 152, where three families and above have to have a gas pipe inspection every four years and, but, okay, that says, all right, that seems to be okay. But the question is, why do I have to hire a master plumber to inspect my house that will cost me, the cheapest I found was $499, and then it could go up to $700. I have to spend money for an inspector. Now, if I don't get that inspector for some reason, I lost track of time, they're gonna find me $10,000. Then I get a bed bug report uh, thing in the letter saying that I had to file an, uh, a bed bug report every year. I never knew about this until I have a violation. And they said that, you know, there's a law that we started in 2017. I have to go into the computer and, and just file a four question stupidity. And what I'm sa basically saying is there's too much restrictions. Our property taxes are going up. What would your plan be for landlords about cutting property tax? It seems to keep going up, even though they don't raise the percentage, but they play the smoke and mirror game. Oh, look, your value of your home is going up. And that is why you're paying more. So what would your plan be I will, to cut property I, tax? First of all, you mentioned the building department. I want to address that. Yeah, go ahead. Every city agency needs to be reformed. These city agencies are designed to put us out of business, whether you're a small landlord, whether you're a restaurant owner, a bodega owner. I mean, every city agency is the enemy of every risk taker that the city has. And I will stop that because we need risk takers to help us rebuild our city. We need to make sure that the Department of Buildings does a job that's more effective. And of course, I will make sure that we can self-certify 
any construction project under a certain amount of dollars um, in New York City. Uh, I will reassess property taxes and cap property taxes because there's no reason. Every time you're reassessed and your property taxes go up, guess what? Your rent goes up. You, go. you're, you're, you have to pass that along. So the city complains that landlords are greedy. No, the city's the greedy one. Right. The city is the one that creates the problem of non-affordable housing. And the city creates a problem for small business owners that want to open a business but can't afford to rent a brick and mortar because the taxes on that property are so high, the landlords have, have to pass it along. So as a, these guys don't know what they're doing because they've never owned a piece of property. They've never owned a business. They probably have never even worked in the private sector. So though, for those reasons are why I am running for mayor, because I will address these issues and I will fix them. I will fix them for the hardworking New Yorkers that are penalized like you're being penalized and like I get penalized over everything. That's what we need to take care of. Yes, well, definitely. I, I agree with you on that because it's getting a bit too it's ridiculous. Too, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. And um, I wanted to also, well, speaking of, in my opinion, the ridiculousness of things, uh, I uh, see the city is coming out with the vaccine passport. Now, I know a lot of people think it's a good idea because it will help uh, make our city open up quicker which uh, I, and it's supposedly voluntary. Now, I, like I said, I work for CUNY as a public safety sergeant, public, a public safety officer. Uh, SUNY, state universities already, yes. they already enacted uh, that the staff, which I'm staff, but I'm not, I'm CUNY right now. The staff and students have to have vaccine passport. That means they have to have the vaccine uh, at the moment. Now, I do not want, me personally, this is my health care decision. Just like women have the right to choose when it comes to abortion, I have the right to choose for my own health care decision. I don't feel comfortable with the vaccine. That's just me. And I don't want it. So I don't want government telling me as an individual that I must have a vaccine in me to continue on working in this city. I've been working there for 19 years as of September, and I don't want my livelihood taken away from me where I can't work no more, but I have to have a vaccine, something I don't feel comfortable with. What do you say uh, about forcing people to get a vaccine to continue working in their current positions? Now, I can understand, one, uh, I could understand moving forward if the new criteria might be that if you want this job, you have to have a vaccine. Okay, moving forward. But if you're currently in this position and you're working there, you shouldn't, in my opinion, be forced to get this. You, you, you know, you're a very, you're a very kind man. I can feel your energy, and you're a very um, caring person. And I'll tell you what I would do. Uh, I would never force anyone to do what they don't want to do. I have never gotten the flu vaccine. Right. I have never gotten any vaccines other than when I was a kid. Right. And you have to have get vaccinated for polio and all that stuff, chicken pox. Right. But I've never uh, I don't believe that anyone should be forced to doing what they don't want to do. I think that's unconstitutional. OK, now, if the city says or the state, because right now it's Emperor Cuomo. OK, that's calling the shot. If Emperor Cuomo says, if you want to open your business to a 100% capacity, um, you need to be, Abbe, you need to make sure that your, your um, patrons are vaccinated. Then it's an option that you have, a business decision that you've got to make. If it's going to bring our economy back, I would like to try to get our economy back because we need to. We need to get back on our feet. But I certainly do not support anyone being forced to getting a vaccine if they want to work for the city or the state. And as you say, if it's pre, it's one thing. If it's after, it should be another. It should be grandfathered in. 
exactly. Thank you so much for, for that because uh, uh, that's a concern I have because, uh, you know, I have a mortgage here. <laughs> I have a big mortgage and I have bills and I don't want to be put into a position where I have to, or because what, what my first thing would be is I would then sue them. Now I have to have my union lawyer and then eventually I'll get my own lawyer. I don't want to go through that type of stress. So uh, I, I would hope this would this could become a class action situation. Yeah. I want you to know. Absolutely. But anyway, um, that's my feeling about that. All right. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, in regards to law and order on our streets, as you know, that the qualified immunity has been taken away from our offices, men and women in the NYPD, which then would I spoke to a police officer today. He said, basically, moving forward, what that would do for the new recruits coming in, uh, they're going to have to have their own insurance that eventually the city might city might offer. So you have to buy our insurance or here's a way of buying insurance. You're going to need an insurance policy. Now, that's also going to probably happen to me because I'm in the state right now. Now, um, the state has not done that with the state agencies at the moment. But, you know, and I know all it takes is something in the news cycle for people to react. And those are the worst legislations ever, is a reactionary legislation. Uh, so pretty soon, I'm sure I'll have to be dealing with that uh, in a law enforcement capacity. Uh, to me, no one in their right mind then would be wanting this position as being a police officer. Or why would they put themselves at risk to go to domestic violence calls or anything like that, where they could be personally sued I think it's quite disgusting what the city council has done and uh, with the mayor supporting this, of course. And uh, what's your feelings on qualified immunity and how could we overturn it? I think it's kind of hard to overturn something like that, especially when you have a city council made up of 51 members when three of them are only Republican. Do uh, you have any ways of maybe? Well, that? listen, the good, the good thing is that when I am mayor, there'll be a new city council. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that a good leader, a strong leader, is a leader that is able to work with the city council and make sure he makes the, the changes that are that are good for the people. Uh, when you're when you're the mayor of New York City, you have a huge pulpit. So I will use my pulpit to do whatever I have to do to make things right. This is a common sense decision. It is stupid what they have done. And it needs to be corrected. And I will use the power of the, the mayor's office to make sure that we correct this. We need to protect our men and women in blue and appreciate the job that they do because it's a tough job, especially today with everything that's going on with all of these radical organizations uh, turning their backs on, on, our, on our finest. That will change when I am mayor. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, also, you mentioned before about the city's homeless population. Under Bill de Blasio, his wife was given a billion dollars, I guess. It disappeared in... billion dollars. And you know who's responsible for that is uh, Scott String. Uh -huh. Right. And, and it just disappeared. I guess all his donors got something or I don't know. Someone got this money because it disappeared. No accountability. And it disappeared, and we would like to know where the heck it went, and how come she is not being prosecuted, or well, or him, the mayor. When, when when I am mayor, I will launch an investigation. Good. And I will make sure that they are held accountable. Bill De Blasio and his wife will not get away with what they're trying to get away with. People go to jail for what they've done. And they are going to have to respond for their actions. I promise you that. Thank you. Because uh, it seems that the public advocate office by Jamani Williams. And... Forget him. He's part oh, of the problem. I know. Part he's of the problem. Living in Fort Hamilton under police protection. And it's yeah. so funny. It's a joke. It's a it joke. Is, it's a, it is quite a joke. I actually went to college with Mr. Jamani Williams. I served in student government with him in the opposite party. Uh, nice enough fella, but his politics is something to be desired. Uh, but um, on your uh, uh, 
platform, do you support uh, school choice when it comes Absolutely. to Absolutely. Part of my platform, every parent should have the right to send their kids to whatever school they choose to. And they will have a voucher system under my administration. If you want to send them to Catholic school, charter school, yeshivas, wherever you want to send your kids to school, public school, you, the parents should decide. Right. Absolutely. Because uh, I will not be in bed with the UFT. I can guarantee you that. And that I'm is, the mayor. I'm the mayor. They're not the mayor. They don't run the city. Uh, that, that, I do. That, absolutely. Because that is the, what is the, what is happening to our, our children. It's disgusting. Uh, they can't even read and write or do a rip and, you know, do math. Uh, it's just uh, totally uh, uh, disgusting how third world countries, so-called third world countries, are better uh, in education. Than, I also believe you know, I also believe in uniforms for our public schools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it brings structure uh, this way. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea because uh, uh, this way uh, people don't have to you know, oh, you're wearing the wrong shoe color. Oh, look at your shoes and all exactly. that. Exactly. There's no comp. You're not going to school to compete or to rob right. someone of their sneakers or their coats or their pants. Or you're there to go to school, not to rob people for right. it. Right. For and, what you have. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of which, our schools, uh, a lot of them in a lot of neighborhoods, are run by gang members. Uh, the Bloods, the Crips, or I call them. My man, that's why I dropped out of school when I was 14. Yeah, nothing has changed. No, nothing has, sadly has not changed, and yeah. it, it, it's uh, absolutely disgusting that kids have to live in fear. Kids absolutely. Also, now, in regards to living in fear, we have a lot of children that like to play in the streets and be children, be kids, but they have to be in fear of what? Bullets flying their way from gang members because our lovely uh, leaders in our city decided that uh, the bail should be gone where we could just bail let... reform bail right. reform needs to be reformed yeah. it's not for everyone right. judges need to use their judgment and be allowed to use their judgment and district attorneys need to do their job and i will hold them accountable i will call them out whenever they don't do their job i will be the first one calling them out believe me yes uh, well because <laughs> that that is very important with uh with that and of course even listen even the food that these kids are being served in schools oh yeah it's terrible you know i would have i would allow parents to order lunch for their kids from the local businesses whether it's a local deli or a diner or a restaurant you know they will have a voucher for x amount of dollars where they can order food for their kids that's affordable and that the kids are going to eat Right now, we throw away 75 or 80 percent of the food we're serving and paying for it. It's being thrown out because kids don't like it. You know, we can help stimulate our economy by allowing small businesses to provide those lunches. And that's what I would do. Well, speaking of the economy, what would your economic plan be to bring back the city from the horrors of coronavirus uh, to get us uh, I, back to, I mean, if you look in downtown Manhattan, it looks like I know, I've Detroit. been through all, I, you, don't, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell yeah. me. I've, I've lived it every day. I know what I need. I know what I need to expand. I know what I need to reopen. I know what I need to succeed. And what I need is what they all need. They need tax breaks. Yeah. We need to stop raising the taxes. We need to give them incentives to open. We need to make sure that every city agency is their friend and not their enemy. We need to make sure that we as a city don't shut down our businesses. We need to turn on the lights, reopen, bring back the nightlife, bring it back up theaters. Protect our businesses, not put them out of business. That's what I believe in. And I know because I am in business. And I know that being in business, what I fear the most are the city agencies, department of buildings coming in and issuing you a fine over a gas line that you didn't know needed to be inspected. You know, seeing the health department give you a fine if you sit over a train station that's um, infested with rodents. And all of a sudden, those rodents become, 
your rodents and you're issued summonses for rodents that don't belong to you. Right. You know, there's so many different things. There are 6,000 rules and regulations. I think we're breaking up a little, Fernando. Do you, uh, I think you might have been passing through a dead zone for the moment. Uh, do you, Chris Takers. There you go. Absolutely. They, they are. Uh, yeah, you got you're broken up a little at the end, but I, I get your point. Uh, they're attacking. You risk. need you need to. We need to protect our risk takers. There are people that borrow money, people that invest their life savings. And the city will come and put you out of business overnight. They yeah. don't care whether you employ 100 people or not. They don't care whether you're a job creator or whether you're going to lose your entire life savings, they shut you down. Yep. And that's going to stop when I am mayor. Well, as uh, one of our members just wrote in the chat section, Andrew Windsor, he said the most terrible, uh, he's quoting, the most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And that was from Ronald Reagan. And that is so true today uh, because it seems like what the government is doing is they are destroying any opportunity people want to better themselves and to build on, to make the city better and greater. And they just want to totally uh, control things and destroy because of their uh, communist uh, policies, basically the way they're running things. And it's- You know, this city, this city's been ran by politicians um, before Giuliani and after Bloomberg, mm -hmm. politicians don't know anything about business. No. All they know how to do is destroy business. Government doesn't belong in business. And I will make sure of that when I am mayor. All I need from you is your support. I need from you your vote. And I need for you to go to MateoTheMayor.com and make a contribution and tell your friends to make a contribution. And let's change the city. We're not gonna change it by talking. We're gonna change it by action. Right. We're gonna change it by, by taking the bull by the, by the horns and voting me in and making sure that I have the funds to be able to win. Otherwise, what we're doing right now is just, nonsense we're just talking we right. need to do we need to to create we need action right uh, we do need action uh, because this city is teetering on the brink of uh, uh, the iceberg dead ahead we're about to hit the, the uh, we're we're already taking on water actually listen no we haven't taken on water we are sinking yeah okay and 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 i'll tell you one thing our party, the Republican Party, needs to have faith and know that I am the only candidate in this race that can be the next mayor. I am an immigrant. I am Hispanic. There are 2.5 million Hispanics in New York City. And in a general election, I'm the only guy that can bring in 500,000 Democratic votes because of the work that I've done for them into the Republican ranks and win. Yang will not beat me. But what I need to do is get through the primaries. And guess what? I have a pebble in my shoe. And that pebble is called Curtis Lewa. Mm -hmm. He's never been a Republican. Never has been a Republican. Never supported Republicans is an anti-Trumper, voted against Trump and campaigned against Trump, got the only senator we had with some kind of power in Albany, got him to lose, which was Marty Golden. So all of a sudden last year he became a Republican. That's not a Republican. We need to wake up and we need to know that the only Republican in this race is Fernando Mateo. And the only guy that has the chance to bring victory to the Republican Party, like Giuliani did, like Bloomberg did, like Trump did, is Fernando Mateo. Those are my values, and that's where I stand. Well, thank you, Fernando, for that 
statement. Uh, we do need passion in this race uh, from uh, our side. We need results. We need, uh, we need people to, because uh, this city is, the Republican Party is outnumbered, I believe, nine to one or eight to one, something like that. That is correct. And we, we do need to convert that side. And I think a lot of them are Republicans or re, have Republican values. They just don't know it. We're just very bad at getting our message out there as a party. And we need to say, listen, especially in the immigrant population, they, with their family values and their hard work ethic. Uh, ethic they're Republicans. Yeah, they're they're re really Republicans. They just not know it yet. Exactly. Right? They are really Republicans. And I'm going to remind them of that. And I will make it happen, but I need to win the primaries. Right. I need your help. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we definitely uh, need uh, uh, candidates out there that will get that message out there. And, and well, I'm the, uh, my man, I'm the only candidate left. Well, yeah, <laughs> we, we will. We, uh, and when is the primary again? That's June 22nd? June 22nd, yes. Okay. And Right uh, now, I'm doing matching funds. I'm trying to reach the goal of the matching funds. So anyone that you know, MateoTheMayor.com. Mm -hmm. Go to chip in and make a contribution. So for every dollar donated, is it matched eight to one? Or that what? is correct. Okay. Yes. So for New York, City, New York City residents. Okay, so for those of you on, in our audience that uh, like what Fernando is saying and uh, is interested in donating his campaign, please go to his website, Fernando. No, Mateo the Mayor. Mateo the Mayor. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. Yes. And you could make a contribution there. And every dollar you uh, donate, it's matched eight to one if you're a New York City resident, and that will help. Uh, get our messages out there, I guess, for in, in his campaign um, to um, help him if you're supporting Fernando. And we also, um, is, I, I, I did catch um, a part of the WABC debate that uh, you and Curtis had uh, the other day, uh, a couple, what was that, last week or so? When was that? Uh, about a week and a half ago? Probably, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions uh, that he was going back and forth with, with you, uh, and I, I know you addressed that, uh, was basically um, when he was saying that you donated money to uh, de Blasio. Now, I understand one thing, that you are a businessman. And I understand, like, for example, our president, Donald Trump, uh, he's a businessman, and he donated to Hillary, uh, I mean, to the Clintons, uh, it's just uh, an unfortunate thing. Unfortunately, if you're in business, people have to understand sometimes you have to do both sides. Is that how you take it for the reasonings? Uh... Yes, you're absolutely right. It's like John Casamitidis. He donated $50,000 to de Blasio. I never personally donated a dime to him. Okay. I just helped him bundle $18,000 because... Mm -hmm. As I have a big constituent, I represent taxi drivers, I taxi represent drivers. bodega owners. Right. And you know what? When you're in business, you're in politics. And when you're in politics, you're in business. I'm sorry to say that's the way it is. You have to have, you want it to, a voice at the table, as they say, right? That's correct. And unfortunately, this city is controlled 100% exactly. by the Democrats. Exactly. Party. So for those who might have seen that, uh, I just wanted to bring that up because I'm not sure. Never, was, I never was, broke the law. I, I no. never broke the. I never broke the law, right. which is what he tried to imply. I've never broken the law in this country, and I never will. Right. So he is a compulsive liar, and if you look up his record and you see how many times he's lied about fake arrests and fake kidnappings and fake this and fake that, you know, and ultimately getting fired from. New York won because he wanted to have sex with the uh, with the with the council speaker. I mean, it goes to show what kind of character the guy has. Been, has a bunch of kids by so many different women. I've been married forty two years. I got three kids. My youngest daughter's a doctor. My middle daughter is an author, a published author, and my son works for sanitation, and he is an actor. Mm -hmm. So that is the extent of who Fernando Mateo is. So 
All I need for you to do is support me. Let's take our city back. And let's get back to where we were seven and a half years ago, before right. de Blasio came in. Well, before, thank you, Fernando. Before we go, if we have any questions from the audience uh, through the chat, we're doing it through the chat uh, section here. And if any of our board members, our chairman, our secretary, treasurer, if they have any questions for Fernando, please uh, chime in now. Yeah. I'm uh, going, just so you know, I'm yeah. crossing the Lincoln Tunnel. Oh boy, losing research. And I went, I went around in circles to make sure that I gave you the time you needed. Okay. Wanted mm -hmm. to be respectful. Thank you. So if I lose you, it's because I'm in the tunnel. Okay, thank you for letting thank us you. know that. Um, I hope we could do this quickly, gentlemen. Uh, we have any questions? Yeah, La Lawrence had a question. Um, uh, Mr. Mateo, as mayor, will you rescind New York status as a sanctuary city for illegal immigrants? Any illegal immigrant that lives in New York City and commits a crime in New York City will certainly not be protected under any circumstances. If you commit a crime, you will have to be deported, period. Thank you. Thank you. And how are you going to fight Marxist indoctrination in our schools? Our schools are not a place for anything other than a learning place, a place that you go to learn. And I will make sure that our schools are learning centers and nothing but learning centers, period. Thank you. I, I, Thank I see, you. Are you in the tunnel now? I could see the lights behind you. Yes, I am. Wow, so <laughs> good reception. At least they got that right so far. The city. Um, <laughs> so well, this uh, isn't this isn't the city. This is Port Authority. Oh, there you go. That's why. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions, Larry? Do you see in the uh, chat? one more quickly? Yeah, that's from Mom. Uh, can uh, can there be improvement in um, evicting disruptive tenants. Can that Listen, be improved in the courts? I believe that tenants that are not paying rent and are collecting unemployment and PPP money should be evicted because they're making more money now than what they were making before. So there's no excuse for them not paying rent. On the hardship situation, if the government wants to intervene and help them carry the load and pay the landlord so that they can pay their taxes, I don't have a problem with that. But any tenant that violates the rules and the regulations of the landlord, the landlord should have the right to evict them. Thank you. Yes, uh, I have a question if we still have time. Yes, Daniel Ramos, our, our treasurer. Go ahead, Daniel. Mateo, thank you for uh, being with us. Uh, Giuliani had a saying, and that was three strikes and you're out when it came into reference to crime. How do you feel about people who constantly commit crime and have a rap sheet that is longer than the Bible? I mean, I, how do we treat these people? Where do we put them? Well, first of all, the city does not have jails. The city has detention centers. The state has the jails and the state has to make sure that when the city arrests a serial offender, that serial offender should do his time, period. If you can commit a violent crime, you should get a, a very, very stiff penalty. If you are committing misdemeanor quality of life crimes, you should be able to get an opportunity to rehabilitate yourself. But if you don't, once again, the judges need to do their job. It's unfortunate, but that's why I want vocational training. I want vocational schools. I will open another 30 to 40 vocational schools and I will make Rikers Island a rehabilitation center where kids that are in there for nonviolent crimes can learn a skill so that when they're released, they can work and have the opportunity to earn a, a decent living. 
That's how you stop crime. You stop it by taking our youth and letting them work all year round, part time, so that they're able to appreciate and know the qualities of hard work. That's how you stop it. So that's how I would do it. Thank you. Alan, you have a question? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, I work over at a hospital, and we are seeing just every day a tremendous increase in young people and adults, and especially people with psych issues who are habitual marijuana users. The Democrats are pushing marijuana as a economic cure-all. Let's legalize weed, we'll be able to tax it, as we've all seen in Colorado, California, and every other state. Every time they legalize it, one, the money's not there because why should I pay $50 for legal weed when I could buy it off the guy from the street for 10 bucks? So cops, instead of busting legal weed, they're just, you know, sorry, illegal weed. I would have, listen, to, add, to answer your question, sorry. I yes. would have never legalized it. I Good. would have decriminalized it. Um, and that's my feeling about weed. Why is, what's the difference in your opinion? The I'm difference is that when you legalize it, you're telling people they can go out there and they can buy it legally now. When people are selling it illegally, you can arrest them because they're selling a, a, um, a substance that's prohibited. But those that are consuming it should not be criminalized. We shouldn't, we should not arrest a guy smoking a joint that simple i mean it takes up too much of our criminal justice system but you should arrest those that are selling it illegally and that's why i would decriminalize the drug for recreational use i wouldn't have legalized it fernando as you're driving right now how many times did you smell marijuana go through the vents uh <laughs> to be quite honest with you not right now but i've smelled it numerous times during the course of the day and i hate it it's disgusting, and I, I yeah. smell it all the time. I'm on the belt, park, uh, belt Parkway. You smell it all over. You could be going 60 miles per hour, and it comes right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you for answering that question. Um, before we let you go, um, do you have any closing statements that you would do, uh, Ed? My closing statement is very simple, guys. I'm not a politician, and I don't like politics. What I, what I tell you is what I will do. I am not, I, I did not accept any endorsements and some of them have come my way because I don't want to be in bed with anybody. Right. I want to be in bed with every New Yorker. I, every New Yorker I will make sure is, that's the endorsement I want. I want New Yorkers endorsement. I will be, the best mayor the city has ever had because I will, I will operate and I will govern this city with common sense, which is a commodity. I will not buckle to public correctness. I don't believe in being politically correct. I believe in being politically honest. I believe that with the experience I have and what I've done in the last 30 years, that alone should tell you what kind of character I have and what kind of leadership I have. And I will lead and I will support and I will make sure that every law enforcement agent in this city is respected. I'll make sure that our small businesses come back. Everything that I've said here tonight, I meant and it comes from the heart. I'm not an angry person. I'm a passionate person and I will govern with passion. And you will see me walking the streets like every other New Yorker, because I don't want to be mayor to have the power to hurt others. I want to be the mayor to have the power to make our city better. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. And all I ask is that you go to MateoTheMayor.com, support me, and definitely vote for me in the primaries. Well, we want to thank you for joining us tonight, uh, Fernando, at the Brooklyn Tea Party uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, we appreciate your time. We know you are working hard to uh, get the, the votes in your direction. And we know it's, uh, we, we want to thank you because it, you stepped up to the plate. 
to put yourself out there. You know, it's not easy. I ran for public office three times also on a minor scale. Uh, you know, it was an area where I knew I was going to basically lose, but I still put myself out there. So I know what you're doing. You, you put, when you run for office, you put your family, everything is out there. And you should be commended for, for fighting uh, the good fight for getting your voice out there. And it's very important, especially for our party, to show that we are, we're made up of many different uh, people. We're made up of many different uh, philosophies within the party. But at the end of the day, we want uh, gov less government in our lives. We want the government to step aside and let the people grow. And I think your message tonight reflects that uh, value. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Have a great evening, and we will speak soon. Thank, thank you. you. God, thank you, and God yeah. bless. God bless you, too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Okay, Larry, you could, uh, I guess, yeah, thank you, Larry. All right, so... um. It was a very informative meeting, I think, tonight. Uh, we want to thank everyone who joined us uh, for this uh, Zoom meeting with our special guest, Fernando Mateo. Uh, like I said, we will be trying to uh, get Curtis Lewa to also speak at our next meeting uh, sometime in May. We'll work out the details there. So that candidate could also say what his feelings are for why he wants to run for mayor and why he uh deserves uh, maybe consideration from your from you the voters uh in this primary to uh, either vote for him or if you like what fernando had to say tonight you could support fernando at the end of the day whoever wins uh we would like uh, the city to be put in a better direction so we need to help whoever that might be uh to support them and to make our city come back from the horror of the last eight years of Bill de Blasio. God help us all. We need a miracle to uh, get the city back into some sort of evil, even keel again. And, uh, you know, uh, what Fernando had to say tonight was uh, very good on a lot of fronts, in my opinion. So you, you, you as the voter will decide in the June 22nd primary. So we do thank you. If, uh, guys on the board, if you have any closing statements before we depart tonight. Larry, anything or uh, Alan, anything? I don't have anything. Yeah, um, okay. listen, end of the day, Sliwa versus Mateo. I liked what I heard from Mateo. Obviously, I still wanna hear what Sliwa has to say. Sure. Right. But, Whoever makes it through the primary, we need to back. The Democrats, as I said, they're not even they're not even the old Democrats. This isn't the party of no, this isn't even Bill Clinton's party anymore. <laughs> no. This is the party that has gone so far to the left that AOC is considered standard bearer, where a San Francisco liberal is the number, what was it? Number three person in the country right now. Yes. Um, Crypt Keeper out over there, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Um, we, need to, we need to pull together. We have to make sure whoever is a Republican, I don't care, Mateo versus Sliwa, I have maybe a preference after tonight, but I'll hold that until I hear Sliwa speak. We need to circle the wagon, so to speak. We need to push and get a Republican into New York City's mayoral position. We have no choice. Folks, I don't care if you say this person isn't, wasn't for Trump, doesn't matter. I don't care if you say this person is too liberal on abortion or on um, guns. Answer is you get 70, 80% from the Republican we have well, one of the Republicans we have, you'll get zero percent with Democrats. Right. I just wanted to. I just wanted to chime in so no one gets anything uh, a little mixed up what you just said with the. Yeah, nobody said anything uh, about abortion. Guns, no, but. no, I'm talking about uh, uh, 
for Trump, not for Trump. You're not talking about abortion. Wait, 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 no. The, the, the for Trump, not for Trump. Fernando was actually for Trump. I, I know you weren't basically saying you said that. that. Yes. Uh, so just yes, got, that was one got a little confused. Uh, Fernando Mateo it was a really did support Donald Trump. He did uh, do that. So just so to clear the air. I, I know you didn't say that. Just someone might have got a little he was making the statement because well, general I, I everyone don't. has their golden goose there. You have to do oh, this yeah. that or the other thing. Then honestly, at this point, really, the you've got two choices. Centrist or communist? Right. That's it. Centrist, communist. Take your pick. It's a it's a sad state of affairs here where we are in the city. So, we, like I said, we do commend someone like a Fernando Mateo for putting himself out there to uh, to fight. It it is a draining experience to run for public office through the signature process, through the media, through the interviews, through this and that. Let me tell you. It ages a person, and it, it, it really does. That's why when you see presidents, they had black hair, and then all of a sudden they're all white. Uh, you know, it's because it does age you. Um, but so they, you know, he should be commended, uh, especially all the candidates in the Republican Party who are running for office this election cycle. Uh, they should all be commended for uh, putting themselves out there and giving people a choice, because uh, the Democrats would just love it. It was just the Democrat running and no one running against them because that's how they would like things because they are dictators and they like mm. to control things in that regard. And that's the way our city looks like right now. But there are good people out there. And I'm convinced that uh, people hopefully had enough and they will wake up and vote and uh, for our candidates and, and get us get us to a point where we could have some sort of a city back to normal, something, because we cannot survive this much uh, further the way things are. So with that note, if I don't have anyone else from the board, uh, they wanted to chime in, nothing else, nothing else. So I just wanted to thank everyone once again for joining us. Well, plans are to have Curtis Lewa next month. Uh, we didn't have a date yet, so we shall see if he could join us. And that way you could hear from that candidate speak and uh, you could form your opinion. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Bill. Oh, okay. I, I thought I was muted for 90 minutes. No, Bill Lloyd's now vice president. Go ahead, Bill. No, I just, you know, uh, I don't see my picture on the screen. And um, earlier on, I, I saw the, the, the muted microphone symbol. I thought I was somehow muted. Now, Bill, everyone was muted except for the board of directors because we didn't want people chiming in, uh, talking over the candidate. So we uh, had a different uh, uh, way of doing things. We had uh, people ask questions through the chat section. So, okay. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I see now that you know you can hear me, so you know I'm okay. Yeah. So that's basically it. So thank you for joining us, of course, Bill. And we want to thank everyone once again. So thank you all and have a good night. God bless. Okay, bye now.